Brothers and sisters, this Friday marks the 22nd of the month of Sha'bah. What this translates into is that a very blessed, sacred, and holy month is about to dawn upon us. And that is the month of Ramadan. And just by saying month of Ramadan, this implies that it is not going to stick around for too long. 29 or 30 days at the most. So it would be fair for us to say that in a week or so, we will be visited by the blessed and holy month of Ramadan. It will come for a short while. After a few days, we will get used to it. And then before you know, we will be hugging and cheek kissing saying Eid Mubarak and Eid Saeed and Kulla Aam Wa Antum Bi Khair. The month of Ramadan is like a guest. And it is not like any other guest. It is not like a guest that exceeds their stay. As the saying goes in English, that guests like fish begin to stink in three days. But Ramadan is not that type of a guest. First of all, the month of Ramadan, it makes a grand entrance and appearance. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has told us compliments of Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu that when the month of Ramadan comes, Futihat Abwabul Jannah, the doors of paradise are opened, the doors of hell are shut, while Sufidat is Shayateen, and the devils are shackled. Subhanallah. The entrance of Ramadan, its descent and arrival is so grand, so magnificent, so spectacular that the doors of heaven are pushed open. Allah pushes open the opportunities for us to get our foot in that door, so to speak. وَغُلِّقَتْ أَبْوَابُ النَّارِ the doors of heaven of hell are wide shut in respect of its approach. Allah covers us and shields us from being exposed to the things that will get our foot into that door. And the devils are shackled and chained. Not only do we get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and away from shaitan, but we are made off limits for shaitan and his evil henchmen. And the month of Ramadan does not come empty handed. It does not come with a wrapped, boxed present or gift. It does not come up with a gift card like the guest of this, of, of this world. It comes with everything that is beyond our grasp and our imagination. You know, speaking of a guest, let's take a few minutes to think about how we as humans react when plans are made to receive a gift, uh, receive a guest. For example, think about when your in-laws or other relatives reach out to you and say that they are thinking of visiting you. Or someone you have a lot of respect and honor for. Someone from your childhood days, from your teen days, from your college days, that you have not met in a long time. Someone that had a great impact in your life. Someone you admire. Someone you looked up to. Some scholar or celebrity. What would we do? Do we wait and see? Do we say to ourselves, you know what, let them get here and then we'll see. Let them get here first. If that's what you do, then Lord have mercy on your guest. Don't we start thinking about how to host them? How to entertain them? Where are they going to sleep? How are we going to take care of them? What should we feed them? Where should we take them? 
we start asking our friends and family for advice. That where should I take them? What's a good place? How are the Smokies? How is Florida this time of year? We start thinking about these things. We start thinking about what's going on in this city on that particular weekend or on that particular week. And if they're coming with children, oh Lord. And especially if they're young and they horse around, we start putting away all of the delicate show pieces and decorations in our living room. We start putting them away. We start cleaning, we start dusting, we start mopping, we get the grass cut, we start changing the sheets, shopping. There is so much involved in getting our houses and ourselves ready to welcome a guest, especially a guest that we have been longing to meet. We will adjust our work schedules or our business schedule to be able to spend time with them. We will show them the sights. We will sit around and laugh. We will call other people, invite other people over in honor and respect of them to make them feel comfortable. We will have a good time. But for how long? A weekend? A week? What about past that? Are we going to show them around town every single day for two weeks? Are we going to throw a party in their honor every evening for two or three weeks? Probably not. And if there are rowdy kids in the picture, then when in the evening when we retire to our room, our wife will ask, when are they leaving? Ramadan is also a guest. A guest that is not going to be with us for a weekend or a week or two, but a whole month. And get a load of this. The month of Ramadan is a guest that is high maintenance. It is a very demanding guest. A guest that arrives to come in between us and our food to come in between us and our lunch and snacking, a guest that will not allow us to even drink a sip of water in the hot, humid, scorching heat of the day. A guest that will not allow us to be intimate with our spouse throughout the course of the day. A guest that demands us to do this not for one day or for one week, but throughout the whole duration of his stay. A guest that demands we be busy with worship and tilawatul Qur'an. A month that urges us to pray on top of what we already pray as our fara'id. A month that encourages, encourages us to feed others and be charitable after staying hungry and thirsty ourselves for 15 or so hours. It is a guest, a month that inspires us to make changes in our schedules, in our lifestyle, in our sleeping habits and our eating habits. All to entertain it. And we have to follow a strict schedule. We have to be very formal and disciplined. If we wake up late for suhoor and we miss it, we can't say to ourselves, you know what? I'll start an hour late, so I'll finish an hour late. You wake up late, tough luck. You go on those 15 days without any suhoor. And if for some valid reason, we are not allowed to fast, we have to make it up when it leaves. And if someone deliberately invalidates their fast with no excuse whatsoever, there are consequences on top of that. Then on top of all of this, near the end, Ramadan puts stress on us to lose more sleep, to search for a night that can fall on any of the last 10 nights of its stay or the odd, odd nights within. That's one tough guest. That's one high maintenance guest. But you know what the difference is? Do you know what the difference is between hosting somebody else, even if it may be our blood, who may be demanding and high maintenance, versus 
entertaining the month of Ramadan. The difference is that we welcome the month of Ramadan. We embrace the month of Ramadan. We anticipate the arrival of the blessed month of Ramadan. People go out away from the city in search for the Hilal of Ramadan. Others wait till the late hours of the evening to hear of its arrival. And when we hear of its arrival, we are not struck with grief. And oh my God, what will I do now? No, we welcome its arrival. We decorate our houses. We make special foods and we do go out of our way. That is the difference. As Muslims, we dedicate ourselves to staying away from food, drink, etc. from dawn till dusk. We commit ourselves to extra tilawa and recitation of the Quran in this month. We willingly commit and submit ourselves to spending more time in the masjid. We stay on top of our obligation to entertain the month of Ramadan. And in spite of the very long day that we have already spent, we stand up every night in extra prayer. We show our generosity and our charity in this month. And then near the end, we welcome with open arms the pursuit and search for the special night. All this struggle, all this strife, Everything that we do, it is not just for one week. It is not just for 10 days. It is for the whole entire month, inshallah. Now, why are we willing to do this? Because as Muslims, we believe that within all of this strife and within all of this struggle and effort, lies our connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Within all of this lies our, our closeness with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It develops the taqwa that we need to move forward in life. It makes our deeds progress to get ourselves through the gates to the garden of bliss. It plants within us the seeds of mercy and compassion towards others that will bless us here and in the next. It embeds within us values and morals that will help us walk the straight path. It will supply us with the defenses that we need to guard our Iman throughout the whole year. It will equip us with the tools that we need to fight off the temptations of our lust and our nafs. All the strive and all the struggle and all of this entertaining and hosting the month of Ramadan will grant us the strength. It will grant us the strength to fight off shaitan and his evil henchmen. And Ramadan, it rises, it raises the stakes for us to reap in the rewards, to loot from the treasures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It comes, it softens our hearts, it uplifts our spirit and enlightens our soul. It comes to reset and clear our account of all sins and shortcomings. And to top all of this off, it grants us the opportunity to tip the scale on the night of power, Laylatul Qadr the night of appreciation, the night of honor, in which a person in one night can earn a lifetime's worth of payout. Alf shah, a thousand months, better than 83.4 years of constant, continuous, perpetual, accepted worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in one night. Wow. And then on top of that, it's not over yet. On top of that, we are paid a special visit by another guest in the month of Ramadan on the night of power. 
tanazzalu al-mala'ikatu wal-ruh angels angels that cannot even be counted pack up the whole atmosphere of the earth and we are paid a special visit by Jibra'il alayhi salam wa ruh subhanallah a month that comes in our lives stays with us for a month but leaves behind an effect that should linger on for the rest of the year till it comes back the next year my brothers and sisters ramadan should come as a guest and leave as a friend Ramadan should be received as a way to work on ourselves spiritually. See, fasting, there is no doubt that it involves abstaining from food and drink, etc. But there is much more depth and meaning in the concept of fasting than just staying hungry and thirsty. This is why our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has told us, again compliments of Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, رُبَّ صَائِمٍ لَيْسَ لَهُ مِن صِيَامِهِ إِلَّا الْجُعُ وَالْعَطَشُ وَرُبَّ قَائِمٍ لَيْسَ لَهُ مِن قِيَامِهِ إِلَّا السَّهَرُ There are so many people who fast, and all they get from their fasting is hunger and thirst. And there are many people who spend the nights worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and all they get is loss of sleep, restlessness. The month of Ramadan demands us to go and look beyond just fasting. It is a time to build our soul for soul searching if you will. The month of Ramadan is a time to get better reception with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's time for us to turn off all the other games and distractions and, and all of the apps that are running in the background. It is time to turn those off and conserve our energy and time and minutes to talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is a time to communicate with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is a time to work on our dua, a time to cry our hearts out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A time to seek forgiveness and ask repentance. To confess your sins to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask Him to forgive you. To confess your weakness in, Allah, in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask for strength. It is a time to display and show Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Display to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you are willing to make a difference this year. The month of Ramadan is to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make you a better person spiritually and morally. To make us a better Muslim than we were after Ramadan than we were before Ramadan. And we should make dua and ask actively ask proactively ask dua should not be limited and restricted to when we come on hard times or when we get sick or when calamity befalls on us befalls us dua is not a spare tire that you pull out only when needed dua is the steering wheel that will direct you guide you and steer you in the right direction. And brothers and sisters, while we work on our dua, let us not forget to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to see this month through. In the best state of physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual well-being, while we lift our hands to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for everything that we can think of. Because we have a lot to be grateful for. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, make dua, keep, remember our brothers and our sisters, our sons and daughters, our mothers and fathers, who right now as we speak in Burma are being slaughtered by the dozen in wholesale. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help 
and protect our fellow brethren and our sisters throughout the whole Muslim world, throughout the whole world. Because they are depending on our du'as. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask us. We will be questioned about this. If we cannot be somewhere protecting someone and making a difference. If we are not financially capable, for whatever reason, to make a difference, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given each of us two hands. At least to pray for them and remember them in our du'as. You know, there was a time where we could not know much about what was going on in the world. We could not see much of what, going on, what was going on in the world. We could not hear much. But now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has gifted us with the technology of communication, media, social media, where we can know exactly what is happening on the other corner of the world. So of the many ways of helping, one of the ways of helping is to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help them, protect them, and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to save us and allow us to be grateful. Because imagine if we were in their shoes. Imagine if we were in their shoes. We get a little upset when something doesn't go according to schedule. We get super upset. When something happens to us, we hold Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on blame and at, and at fault. Imagine what millions of people are going throughout the rest of the world. We have so much to be thankful for. So stop the complaining and be thankful and grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even though it may look like you are at loss or you are suffering a shortcoming, but in the words of Ibn al-Qayyim al-Jawzi, rahimahullah, sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes something out of your hands only to put something better in it. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروا إنه هو الغفور الرحيم. لا Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah,